Hello, everyone. So welcome all of you to our webinar series where we are going to share with you some innovative payment solutions in our series to share all these like greatest offerings, uh, particularly for the SME community in Hong Kong and, and, and beyond. Uh, first of all, uh, as uh, some of you might have know this from our previous to our economy that we are very, very hard to try to find ways that we can help our SMEs to do their business uh, in a better way, much more effectively, high margin and so on. Now, obviously I think the pandemic has changed a lot that prompted many of the SME owners to rethink how they do business in a different way by adopting digital. But sometimes when we think about, well, I think this is a good idea, but how? Right. So again, when we look out to some of the leading companies that are providing some amazing uh, and innovative solutions, they can help SMEs to do better business. So faster, better, and cheaper. And today we are just very privileged that we got this to join us at this uh, very special events. So at this point, I just want to uh, express our gratitude to our supporting organization, the Chinese uh, General Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong, the Federation of Hong Kong Industries, and Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce. And again, with your support, then we are able to really spread the word and reach out to many of SMEs in the community. Now, at the same time, I, I just want to thank our four very distinguished speakers, uh, the great leaders from four leading uh, companies in the fintech space. So we have uh, Mr. Bill Tang, the CEO of uh, X Transfer, and then uh, Mr. Uh, AB10, the Chief Commercial Officer with uh, Tunes, Mr. Eric Yu, General Manager with Atomi Hong Kong, and last but not least, with um, Nikki Ramsey, CEO of Cardup. Now again, X Transfer, Atomi, and Cardup have been in Hong Kong for some time. They are offering uh, great services to the community. And today we just want to basically spread the word to let more SMEs to know about them. Now, at the same time, we also have Toons that are offering cross-border payment uh, uh, so solution in the region that, in, again, they are really ramping up to try to offer the great service uh, to all our uh, members and community as well. Now, so in the next few minutes, I would like to invite the, each of the leaders uh, from our four distinguished speakers to introduce themselves so that our audience will be getting a better understanding about what they do. So without further ado, let me just uh, invite uh, the first uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Bill Dank, uh, H Transfer, to take a few minutes to share about uh, what H Transfer uh, does, and then I'll move on to the other uh, three speakers uh, subsequently. So with that, uh, off to you, Bill. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Bill. I'm CEO and co-founder of X Transfer. So X Transfer, we are a fintech company uh, headquartered in Shanghai. So our mission is simple. We are here to make SME financial services simple and accessible. Um, we have observed that SMEs actually is now the dominating force of importing and exporting. So we see millions of exporters and importers are playing a very important role in this cross-border trade. But we see there is a big gap between the financial institutions as, and the SMEs. So the most, time, the most painful point for most SMEs is that they find it very difficult and costly to maintain bank accounts, like maybe in, um, a, in the HSBC and other traditional banks, right? So what X Transfer do is to, we, we build a global transfer platform. We work with the bank partners like Citibank, like DBS, um, like Deutsche Bank, and also local banks in USA, in Europe, in Korea, and Japan. So by connecting those banks, we build this so-called a global transfer platform, which previously only large corporations like Apple or like a you know um China for children they can afford to be one of, like that. So by doing so, we'll be able to help our exporters clients. They open a open collection accounts provided by bank partners of us in Hong Kong, in Singapore, in USA, in in Korea, in Japan, and also in European countries within 24 hours. Um, so 
So we provide them not only the global question account, but also local question account. And we also build our FX conversion platform so that they will be able to convert their FX currencies, uh, the, you know, foreign currencies conveniently and at a very low cost. Um, so the other portion of, of what we do is that um, we build a AI-driven, data-driven, internet-based and automated um, risk management infrastructure. Um, because we understand previously banks are not able to serve SMEs well because they, are, they found it very challenging to deal with all those AML related issues brought by SME, SME pro, pro, um, portfolio of customers. So what we did is to, we made sure all those SMEs clients we bring to our banking partners, all those AML risks are well handled by us. So we call X-Transfer, it's not only a FinTech company, but we are risk management companies. So to our clients, they will only need to submit the you know, information relating to their logistics, relating to their transaction, so that our AI-driven risk management you know, infrastructure will be really able to monitor their transaction. And our clients find it very convenient and very easy to uh, you know, submit information and, and they don't feel they're getting reviewed um, seriously. And, but, but actually, um, by, doing, by, by, by providing this AI during AML risk, our banking partners will be able to provide a stable services for SMEs. Um, so this is um, what X Transfer do. So right now we have a large, um, you know, have a uh, we call it a, a, a team of um, almost one thousand and five hundred around the world. Um, so we have we have been able to serve in more than uh, one hundred fifty thousand SME clients in China right now, and we are play we are play, planning to expand to uh, globally expand globally and provide services to clients outside of mainland China. Um, so. Um, so this is what we do. So I will hand it over, over to Ken. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Bill. I guess for the audience who are really looking forward to know more about uh, egg transfer in, in other firms, uh, just stay put. We actually have some in that discussion in the subsequent session. With that, I just want to uh, got a chance uh, AB with the tunes to say a few words about uh, your, your company and introduce to our audience. So AB, off to you. Yes, thank you, Kings. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, really excited and thanks for inviting me for, for this panel. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to share a bit about uh, how tunes um, to help SME or businesses to pay and get paid in over 100 plus country around the world. Just a quick introduction. I think Tunes uh, may be new in Hong Kong, but definitely we are not. We are not a new company. We established in two thousand and five, and we venture into the cross-border payment business in two thousand and fifteen. So today, uh, I think we 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 have last year we process over one hundred forty million transactions. So we have a very robust platform supporting our customer globally. Uh, to help them to process payments, to get paid or pay into the rest of the world. So we have three, we have three licenses and we are offices in four continents. Today we work with many different banks, financial institutions. We have 300 members, 200 plus members connecting to this network, this platform to help them to move money in and out of uh, different part of the world. So um, a highlight, we're able to process payment, pay out into 100 plus country we are able to collect payment uh, from another 70 plus different countries. So when you want to look for a company to help you to make payment or get paid, Tunes, we believe, is one of the few in the world that are able to effectively serve your need. Right, so there's, there's another illustration of what Tunes are, is doing is to, to ensure they understand what we are doing. On, on the left side, we help SME or businesses to collect payment. Uh, through a local payment methods. So on, on the other end, when you we also can with the same platform, we also can help you to make payment to, to your supplier, to the seller uh, globally, whether it's going to a bank account or, or going to the wallets. Right. One of the emphasis, emphasis that I want to make is that we are building and we own this network, meaning we build relationship with all these different payment providers, these the banks and the wallets. And, and that is 
the key strength that we have now. They, they, it, it takes us many, many years going through different uh, uh, partner globally to establish this, net, this connectivity, this partnership. Now, let me go to, walk through you uh, on the Tunes payout network. I highlighted that we, offer, we support over 100 plus, 110 countries. That is where we are. So we, we, by connecting to Tunes, we can help you to process payment almost everywhere. Whether you want to make a payment into Mexico, or into Singapore or into Europe, you send a transaction to us, we make we process the payment. And I want to emphasize again, we own this network. We are not using a bank, we are not connecting to a third-party bank to process this payment. We are the one who actually moving the fund. We are the one who having the relationship with the bank globally. Now, this, this is a quick illustration of how easy for you to process an international payment. So you select where you want to make a payment. You enter the amount that you want to make payment, whether it's a, it's a destination currency or, or the source currency where you want to make payment. And then you, then you look at the quotation, the pricing we are given to you, the FX, how comfortable are you if you want to move forward. And then you fill in the information, your company information, you might have this information stored in a system. You don't have to fill them. And then you enter the beneficial, beneficiary information. You en enter the... Uh, the purpose of the transaction tunes have a very robust compliance uh, system. We do screening. Uh, we also do transaction monitoring. All this is quite important to ensure that eventually the, your, the fund of flow will not be uh, disrupted, that, that you can be able to process in a very uh, smooth manner. So when then you review, uh, confirm the transaction, and when you confirm, you process it. Now, because tunes, we own this network. Like we only we, we are able to give you a notification when the beneficiary receives the fund. And in many instances, the fund are being transferred in real time. So when I say real time, meaning that the moment say you want to make a payment from Hong Kong to Singapore, a $10,000 Sing dollars payment. So when you send the transaction to us, we're able to ensure the money arrive at the beneficiary bank account within a few seconds. And, and we will notify you the fund has been arrived, right? So this is, this is one of, one of the, 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 the strength that we have. And this is where we help SME to use our platform to make payment uh, globally. Now, the other part, uh, there are also other features within the, within the platform. I'm not going into the details. I just want to ensure you that it's secure. We have this maker and checker. Someone process the transaction, someone approve the transactions. Now, move on to the next slide. Uh, the, the earlier, I'm, what I'm explaining to you is to make a payment to, to someone, uh, to the supplier. Then on this one, we also help your company to expand business globally so that you can collect payment from different parts of the world. So we cover 70 plus country, we, we accept different payment methods uh, globally and we continue to expand this capability. This is not where we end, this is where we start. No, there's one of the uh, one of the very interesting capability that, that we have is virtual account in the emerging markets, right? Now, assuming you want to expand your business from Hong Kong, you want to target Indonesia. I think Indonesia one of the key market in Southeast Asia. I think they, they have they have the one of the hub the, the population is one, one of the highest in, 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 in this region. Now, you want to expand in the region, you, Indonesia, you want to be able to collect payment. You, if, if, you want to, if you want to collect payment, you have to collect in local idea. So you can go and establish a company, uh, open a bank account to help to collect payment in, in idea. Or you can work with Tunes, where we're we, we able to issue your virtual account to use this virtual account to collect payment and we're able to notify you when the payment arrives. And also at the same time, we let you decide when you want to move the money back to your home country in, in the currency that you want. Like you say, I want to collect payment in IDR. After I collected the payment idea, maybe I want to wait for, I uh, accumulate my fund or wait for a week later. You, you make the decision the moment you want to say, I want to withdraw my payment from IDR to Hong Kong dollars to USD, let Tunes know. Tunes able to help you bring this money back to your home country. So this is one of the key benefits we're helping the businesses, the SME to grow their business beyond their home country. 
No. The other, the other uh, example I want to demonstrate to you, show you that we, we, we support many different local payment methods to help them to collect payment. One of them is work with company in Europe, uh, Uber, Uber Eats in Europe, where we allow the, them to use a meal voucher. The meal voucher as a way to order the food and, and to process the payment is, is beyond the typical cut scheme. We go local, we provide the most relevant local payment methods. Now, uh, I think there's a quick introduction of myself. I'm, I'm ready to, uh, please do let me know if you have any question. Looking forward for a nice uh, in, in, uh, interaction in later on. Thank you very much. Great. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, AB. Now, so I think we just want to keep the momentum going. So next up, uh, I'd like to invite Eric to uh, introduce to us your amazing uh, story. So again, you guys have been, been literally on a rocket trajectory. Are you, you're on mute, Eric. Okay, so, so I guess uh, when Eric is still setting up his slides, uh, for, for those uh, of you, sorry, uh, I'm, I'm okay right now. Sorry, sorry. Great, great. Okay, talk okay. to you, Eric. So, uh, can, can you see my screen? Yes. Um, I'm sorry for that. Just uh, unmuted myself just now. Um, uh, morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for invest Hong Kong's invite. Uh, on behalf of Atomi Hong Kong, I'm pleased to present Atomi by now Penetra solution for you uh, as one of the rising payment options for retail online and offline across Asia. Um, Okay, recently, I believe quite a number of you have noticed there's a new payment method for retail that is pretty popular in Western world. And you might start to find out that some merchants in Hong Kong have been adopting similar solutions. Yes, it's called the Buy Now Pay Later service. Uh, it's a combination of mobile payment plus installment solution with a special target on younger generation, especially Gen Z and the millennial aged 18 to 35 years old. I think you have uh, noticed that in uh, Australia, in the US, in the uh, Europe, this is a very popular payment method among this younger generation. Okay, when making a transaction normally, you need to pay the full amount. Okay, but with Atomi, the users only need to pay one third today. Okay, and then they can uh, own the product and enjoy the service immediately, right away. And then they can pay the following two bills in upcoming two months with free interest and zero handling fee. No hidden agenda and a completely transparent user journey. Well, as a merchant, you can, uh, through our Atomi, you can receive the money when users make a transaction, T plus three working days, meaning Merchants do not need to wait until users finish the delivery payments. Atomi bears the full risk for merchants while providing strong financial flexibility for both users and merchants in this sense. So not just that, with Buy Now Pay Later solution, Atomi has proved to be able to increase merchants' average basket size or ticket size by 30%, total GMV by 23%, and online conversion by 15%. And we have also a very um, uh, traffic driven strategy on younger generation by utilizing all kinds of media channels, KOL channels, uh, et cetera. Um, the positioning of buy now pay later for retail payment is on the spending of medium uh, frequency and, also, and medium ABS. ABS stands for average basket size uh, to differentiate from the current mobile wallet which, which is at the bottom, um, which is focused on high frequency and low ABS, such as you buy, you buy a, uh, a bottle of water or you uh, take MTR and you can use some of a wallet or MC tap card, uh, or a credit card and debit card, which is focused on low frequency or high ABS, such as you buy a luxury bag or you buy a car. So uh, in the middle, we target this middle uh, sector. It's pretty much a hundred to thousand of dollars uh, ABS, Hong Kong dollars ABS. Okay, so basically, Atomi, we are a buy now pay later payment platform, a credit enabled marketplace 
rely on big data uh, driven marketing capability to help drive more GMV and traffic to our partners and provide more analytics on customer insights to facilitate our partners to understand their customer more, especially Gen Z and millennials. And the group of people which is underserved by traditional banks. We provide online and offline solutions with easy plug and play integration solution, ready for you anytime. That is very cost and time friendly for our SME partners. So Atomi started from Singapore two years ago. Um, Advanced Intelligence Group is our mother company to provide strong EKYC and risk management technology. We've been expanding very fast across Asia. We have now over 3000 merchants, 20 million registered users, and have been working with over 250 influencers across Asia. As the leading by now pay later platform in Asia. We have covered nine markets so far, including Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines, Spain, China, Malaysia, et cetera. And more markets will be onboarded by the end of this year. Stay tuned for more new market excitement. Um, in Hong Kong specifically, we officially started our business in November last year. With several months of development, we've been driving the business growth for over 300 merchants in Hong Kong with over 400% GMV growth. And in Asia, our partners category are quite wide, including fashion, beauty, lifestyle, and with many famous names already onboarded, such as Pandora, MCM, Zalora 68, Sasa, Bonjour, uh, Secure DNA, price right, etc. Our online and offline solutions are ready for use to help you to capture more business, for, uh, especially online. Uh, our offerings include uh, a super tour for e-commerce that's called the price divider. Uh, we can help our merchants to implement this price divider at their website or their apps uh, with a small price tagline to help your customers to visualize that they only need to pay one third today to own the product right away. So uh, with this implementation of price divider, it has proved that we can help our merchants to uplift uh, the conversion rate by 15%. Um, to better serve our SME partners, we have joined hands with local e-commerce platforms such as Botia, ShopPage, and some to come like Shop, uh, ShopPlay to enable Atomi solutions for uh, our SME partners easily and quickly. Yep, we're happy to have the chance to serve Hong Kong retailers with the Buy Now Pay Later service to strengthen O2O service while providing a flexible interest-free payment option, allowing Hong Kong customers to access and afford quality products and services with payment convenience for their dream life. I'm looking forward to working with you very soon. Uh, you can scan my QR code, WeChat QR code to contact me for further information. Thanks everyone. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Eric Nikki, because basically she's providing something that offer great service across a broader spectrum of SMEs. So with that, uh, off to you, Nikki. Thanks, Nick. Hi, thanks. And uh, hi, everyone. Morning, everyone. Um, so um, I'll give you a quick introduction to um, CardUp. Uh, CardUp provides um, card-based payment solutions to thousands of businesses, um, which really revolutionizes the way that uh, SMEs from small business right the way through to larger corporates are both paying, uh, getting paid, as well as managing their payments today. Uh, we're a licensed financial institution, both in Singapore, where we're headquartered, um, as well as in Hong Kong. And our technology solution works very much in partnership with your existing banking products. Um, and therefore, we partner closely with um, brands such as Visa, MasterCard, as well as local banks uh, in Hong Kong, like HSBC. To give you a quick um, introduction to the platform, um, CardUp is one of the few fintech solutions to bring both payments and collections, as well as accounts payable software, into one very simple, easy to use platform. Um, I think the important thing here is that we don't expect businesses to have any kind of technical knowledge or technical skills in order to use card up. We've really made it very, very simple. There's no setup time. Um, there's no implementation, software implementation needed. You can really just come to card up, sign up and you get both payables and receivables in, in one platform. Um, on our payables products, what's unique about the solution is that we allow you to use your existing credit card 
to pay any expense that was previously made by bank transfer, uh, check or cash um, onto card, even if the end recipient doesn't take card payments. So to give you an example, paying perhaps uh, your office rent or your, uh, your, the rental for your retail um, space or your corporate tax bill or even your employee's payroll. And in doing so, um, we allow you to leverage the available credit line that comes on your card to actually you know, improve cash flow on a monthly basis. Um, and in addition, we have a collection solution that helps businesses get paid digitally without needing to integrate into a payment gateway or maintain any type of merchant account uh, with a bank. Let me just bring it to life a little bit, what I was talking about in that credit solution or, or the ability to use your credit card to make payments. Um, if you imagine that you have, apologies for the slide. Uh, if you imagine you have a total credit card limit of let's say 400,000 uh, Hong Kong dollars, and perhaps every month you're using $100,000 of that, that means you're actually sitting on an available line of credit almost in your pocket that is completely underutilized. So we look, allow you to unlock the potential of that credit line and use it for any of your accounts payables expenses, meaning that you actually get to hold on for your, to your cash longer for up to 60 days, whereas your supplier or end recipient gets paid instantly. Um, and the, the, the price for, for, for using this, I should mention, is about 75% cheaper than other funding sources that are available in the market. Um, in addition, uh, we provide a, a suite of different tools that allow you to automate um, your payments, whether that's consolidating uh, payments or within one digital dashboard, uh, scanning in invoices which get scanned and, and, and digital payment lines created. We specialize in reoccurring payments, so you can set up payments once for multiple months and you really don't have to worry about it again. And in this way, our customers save up to 70% of their time when processing payments. A uh, quick uh, case study just to, to finish off, which is from um, GoBuddy, a, a Hong Kong based um, company. Uh, they are a online business software solution um, that provides various different e-services um, and e-shops. They are growing rapidly at the moment uh, and uh, both increasing employees, but also have a lot of uh, expansion plans. And I think there's sort of two things that they're struggling with as they as they set out on that journey, one is to improve their operational productivity. Uh, so ensuring that as they expand, you know, the amount of overheads and complexity in the business doesn't increase at the same speed. And also to in, you know, improve short-term cash flow because they need a very fast and flexible way of financing the business through this growth without having to take on any um, you know, heavy sort of long-term loans. And so CardUp Solution really um, has solved for this. We provide both of these solutions all in one platform simplifying your life. You just need to use one, one system and one solution. GoBuddy schedules their reoccurring payroll on, on their credit card on platform on card up every month and they access that interest-free credit. And you can see on the right-hand side a, a testimonial from the team um, just explaining how they've managed to cut down the hours spent processing payroll each month um, as well as benefiting from that, that credit or cash line. So yeah, I look forward to the, the discussion for the rest of the session and um, uh, you can see the, the, the contact information here or, or go to our website cardup.hk to find out more. Great. Uh, thank you so much for, for sharing. Now, um, I guess uh, what I'd like you to do is first uh, encourage uh, all the audience online to start to uh, think about the kind of questions that you would like to ask the, the leaders on the webinar so they can share more detailed information with you. Just feel free to send, send us your question on the chat function. And then we will basically uh, go through them as we go along, as opposed to waiting until the very end. But uh, I guess just to warm things up, uh, I'd like to start with some numbers. So uh, perhaps I would like to invite, invite uh, Eric. Now, just now uh, in your introduction, you briefly uh, sort of share a few numbers. I wrote down the you know, plus 30%, plus 15%, Actually, my, my head got a bit dizzy. So can you, can you share a little bit uh, with our audience again about how your service is able to help your merchant clients to do more business? And there's a highlight a few numbers that really get your clients excited. Sure, thanks, Kane. Thanks for the uh, question. Yeah, uh, right now we are serving over 3,000 merchants across Asia. And in Hong Kong, we are serving over 300 merchants. And we have done the calculation that on average, we can help our partner 
partnering merchants to uplift their uh, average basket, basket size by 30%, GMV by 23%, and online conversion by 15%. And we are pretty confident that uh, we can bring those uh, excitement to our merchants because of four factors. First one, our buy now pay later product solution to provide flexibility for customers to pay only one third today. And second one is our credit enabled marketplace to drive traffic online and offline for our merchants, big or small. Third one, our marketing and promotion strategy to encourage more spending from our users. Fourth, uh, finally, uh, our unique social strategy with strong KOL focus. Right now, we've been working with 200, uh, over 250 influencers across Asia. Yeah, that's that's great. I guess uh, we will save some time, but perhaps uh, from the audience that I would imagine people will have questions about social commerce is such an explosive area when it comes to uh, the, the tactic to drive sales. So we'll probably circle back on this. Now, so with that, I guess I would like to move uh, on to, to Nikki, we caught up. Because again, uh, as I uh, talked to Nikki the, the first time we spoke uh, a while ago, again, when I when we first heard of it, it's just so simple, right? Well, two months free. Wow, I was like, this is too good to be true. So I guess uh, as, as we talked about before, I think for the, a lot of entrepreneurs, right, they're like, wow, this is just too good to be true. Is there any catch? So, so <laughs> Nikki, I'd like to invite you to share with the audience about uh, how can you work? Just, it's just too good to be true. <laughs> um, no catch. What we uh, let me talk to you a little bit about the pricing. Uh, uh, so it's free to sign up to Card Up. There's no monthly subscription fee. Um, so you can sign up, take a look around, uh, look at how it may benefit the, your business. Uh, we charge on a per transactional fee basis. So it's only when you spend um, that we, we we charge a fee, um, and that fee um, can vary depending on a number of factors, including the, the type of payments you're doing, or the or the banking product or credit card that you're using. Um, but it typically ranges um, around sort of one to one point nine percent. Can be lower with some of our bank partnerships in place. And what that means is for two months interest free credit, you can kind of think of it like an annualized interest rate, if you like. Of somewhere between sort of five to six percent per annum, and so actually it's it's definitely more affordable than than you know other sources of financing that are available in the market. But in in addition to that, it's, it's not really just rates; it's really the flexibility and um, uh, the speed as well, right? You're not having to take out a loan; you're not having to wait for approval time, and you only pay for for the amount of credit that you actually use on that transaction. Uh, similarly, if you use our collections product, the payment gateway that I mentioned, the sort of no code payment gateway. Um, that, that, that can, can just mean sending out a simple payment link and you can get paid digitally. It's the same thing, it's a transactional based fee. Great, uh, thank you so much, uh, Nikki. I guess I just want to so keep this going to really get the audience uh, fired up. Now, I guess uh, when we look at uh, payments, oftentimes I think that we have some uh, local solutions offered by Eric and Nikki. At the same time, we've got a cross-border payment solutions. So with that, I, I, I would like to have a question for AAB. So you guys have been around for some time and you have been really extending your tentacles to so many countries, including Africa. Now, so, but besides that, uh, then I know you also have like mass payout and different capabilities. So I guess putting myself in the shoes of the SMEs like doing cross-border, uh, you know, exports business, e-commerce, you know, in a way, just so kind of dizzying, right? There's just so many things you guys can do. Can you just highlight one or two things that you guys have done really well, particularly well, uh, that you can highlight to our audience uh, on, on the call? So, AB? Yeah, sure. Thanks, King. Thank, thanks for the question. Yeah, I think um, um, I think we have been in the business for many years. Over the years, I think we, we engage with many different types of company, SME, bank, financial institution, and so on. So I think some, some one of the, one of the um, a very positive feedback that, that we get from, from some of the partner or customer is, I think we have a very extensive network uh, to process payment um, to, to many parts of the world beyond Africa. I think, and, and we continue to, to expand these network capabilities and to be able to cover more country to the most difficult, more re most removed country like Fiji, for example, in, in, the, in, in the islands, right? Um, so, so I think that is one of the key, key strengths that we, we always get a lot of positive feedback, especially when they want to make payment to some of these exotic countries. 
they find it so difficult and so expensive, right? So, so things are able to reach out to, to many of these countries, uh, whether, it's, whether it's in uh, LATAM or, or whether it's Africa or whether it's in Asia Pacific. I think that's one of the, one of the area that I want to highlight to you. Uh, the, the other thing is more like the speed and the, the cost of payment. The speed is because we, we, we have a direct relationship. We own this network. So the speed of payment rate in most cases is real time. So of course there are some situation that because of the local infrastructure uh, limitation, we are not able to deliver real time. And then the, the cost of transition relatively is, is really quite low. Like I'm talking about a few dollars for international payments. So I think this, this is just one, some of the things that I would like to highlight. Great. Thanks so much, A.B. Now, and I think there's another question I really need to ask on behalf of the SME uh, audience. Uh, this is uh, for Bill. Now, you guys have done a great job to build like, an amazing relationships with major banks because of your track record, controlling risk and everything. Yeah. Now, the one thing that I think a lot of the uh, folks overlook is the hassle to open bank accounts. Now, but then have you guys somehow solved it in a way that, I guess perhaps you have explained the audience again. The first time I heard that, I was like, wow, this is great. But in terms of the whole like, bank account, the sub master account, the sub accounts, account structure, make it easier for your SME uh, customers. So can you explain a little bit about that and how this help your export driven uh, SME clients? Um, so we, 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 we work with bank partners. They provide us like a virtual account solution. So based on this solution, we'll be able to provide collection account that uh, works like a genuine bank account, um, like so that our clients will be able to present to their buyers so that the buyers will be able to wire in money into the collection account. So what makes us, our solution um, special is that actually we automate the KYC solution. We automate the um, risk uh, monitoring, the transaction monitoring um, um, process. Um, and we work with our bank partners compliance team very closely. Uh, we have to make sure all those transactions we monitor and the results we get, um, because we share the monthly dashboard to our bank partners compliance team, we, we make sure that all the, all the you know, AML related results are um, acceptable of bank partners. So because we have an AI driven um, risk management engine so that um, we got all the data um, we set up our rules in our engine. Um, we, after we have all the, you know, data, enough data, so we got the, uh, you know, the relationship of the network of the relationship between the sellers and buyers globally. And also we can identify the, the normal and abnormal uh, behaviors because we got all the characteristics of each relationship, right? So that we'll be able to, you know, automate the, the process of uh, reviewing all the transactions submitted by our client. So, so this AI-driven risk management engine has been, you know, has been proven its effectiveness, effective, effectiveness, and also have been proven its um, a, the experience we bring to our customers. Uh, it is so good. Um, so, so. By doing so, we got uh, we make our banking partners satisfied, and also we bring good experience to our end clients. Great, uh, thank you, Bill. I see that uh, there's some question already coming in for you. I will we we'll circle back and answer those uh, questions uh, shortly. Now, I guess uh, the next question I'd like to have is uh, for Eric, because I also see uh, some questions along those lines too. Now, the one thing that uh, I, I got some statistics that uh, based on some research uh, by the year 2026, you know, the buy now, play later services will account for, wow, like over 20% of international e-commerce transactions. So this is a big deal. Now, um, and first is only 9% this year. So in five years time, you grow from 9% to 20% or 20% of all transactions. So this is a, a big boost. Now at the same time, I think there have been some concern about, well, would this be, encouraging people, particularly the younger ones, uh, millennials to spend beyond their means, right? So I think there's always like a default kind of uh, uh, risk, right? So how do you ensure, which is also a question from one of the audience is, so how do you ensure that the, 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 the consumers really pay you know, the, the installments? So, so can you shed some lights on how you manage the, the balance between getting customers 
是一次 service at the same time controlling the risk. Yeah, thanks, Ken. And also, I have noticed some of the questions from the chat room.、Um, uh, I'm happy to answer those、uh, questions.、Uh, I get.、Uh, uh, I mean,、uh, those are actually good questions. We actually promote、uh, autonomy. We actually promote a responsible spending life,、uh, lifestyle by providing financial flexibility to our users to make li their life easier and more accessible with interest-free and zero surcharge. Hence, our users. Will not have a snowball of interest debt. Okay, I think that's the main difference between the traditional uh, instrument uh, provided by some of the banks. And I,、uh, we have a much shorter repayment schedule than traditional in,、uh, instrument to lessen our users' worry for a pretty long billing cycle.、Um, talking about the payment defaults, actually, this is a good、uh, aspect I like to cover. Actually, buy now, pay later business. It's not just about a secure and a fast payment system. It's also about the risk management.、Uh, our mother company is called Advanced Intelligence Group,、um, uh, which is specializing in risk management, EQIC, and credit scoring. And we've been providing our、uh, technology for、uh, some financial institutions in、um, a, a Southeast Asia market. And therefore, it makes perfect. Uh, sense for us to start a term of business because we got the world class、uh, risk management technology. While comparing with other payment company, they are pretty much outsourcing their risk management support from a third party company, which will have a lot of problems like response time or even user data leakage. Yeah, thanks, King. Great,、uh, thank you, Eric. So maybe I'll have another question for for Nikki. So just now, the, besides your core service, you also talk about another great service that you're offering to SMEs, which is some simple, easy to use、uh, software to manage the, the business. So with that, I guess, can you talk a little about about okay, if the SME is really not tax savvy at all, or、right, they can barely use a mobile phone, so are they okay to use the software to help their daily needs? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't require any sort of、uh, you know technical knowledge. I think pretty much if you're able to make an online purchase, you can probably use the card up platform. But I think importantly, the aspect that you're mentioning、um, is very much around like the digital tools and sort of automation software. You know, obviously, over the last eighteen months, we've seen an enormous shift in terms of the way that we all do business.、Um, you know, finance teams are now working remotely. Having to collaborate with your colleagues when you're not, you know, in person or face to face, and so、um, off the back of that, we really sort of、um, within the team came up with how can we actually help our our customers in this new norm that we're operating in, and how can we give them the right tools and collaboration uh, features um, to allow finance teams to work digitally and remotely. And so, you know, there's a, a range of features from team management, make a checker. Uh, invoice sort of automation and digitization. So it's really all about speed and and simplicity, and that's the sort of software that we've provided. And actually, one point importantly, just to finish on, is、uh, we also integrate with、um, not only your existing bank solution. You can not only use your existing bank solutions or credit cards, but we also integrate with your existing、uh, ERP or accounting platforms. So a popular one in in, in Hong Kong would be Zero,、uh, uh, the accounting tool, or Um, SAP, SAP Concur. So、um, these are the types of partnerships and integrations, and that means that the data will actually sync between systems, which again、um, just helps to 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 keep things simple and、uh, save time. Yeah, that's great.、Uh, this is so helpful because again, as as you know, you know Hong Kong has always have the 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 challenge in hiring、uh, tech people. So the now is uh is uh helping out based on some new. Initiatives, but still, it's not easy to find good tech folks in Hong Kong. So this is greatly、uh, great help to the folks in SMEs. Now, moving on very quickly with AB. Now, you guys have been around for quite some time. You've seen it all、uh, around the world. So, I guess flipping around, if you were to help our audience、uh, to choose, right, to decide, you know, which sort of payment、uh, service provider、uh, to choose from. So, objectively. What are the few factors they should look at in deciding、uh, who to use to help with their cross-border money exchange remittances、uh, kind of work? Sure.、Uh, thanks. Thanks, King. Yeah, I think、uh, for SME, I think one one of the key criteria for them is to look at the background. 
uh, and the experience of the company that they want to choose to work with is quite important. As you know, it involves the the physical the the fund itself, the cash, the money, right? So they they they, they want to make sure that it's, it's a company that have a strong background. It's a company that can trust that they can deliver the fund or they can help them to collect the payments. I think I think that's quite important from the SME. The, if you if I think to ensure that they they have certain trust for them to help them to handle the payments. Then, then, then the other one is of course uh, the offering capabilities of, of, the, of the company. Does, does the company able to offer the service that, that meet their requirements? The payment can be quite complex, right? Depending where you might want to collect the payment from, where you, where you want to send the uh, money to, and the involved regulatory compliance and so on, like what Bill had touched on. So, so you, if you look at holistically, you need to make sure that um, that the, that you you have you have a right company to able to process payment in different type of company different type of country beyond just a typical US or, or Europe as well as to some of the emerging markets that that, that you you able to deliver in the way that you intended to not not to not to indirectly making a unnecessary challenge or mistake that you can't end of day tra uh, trace the fund where where was it where is it. So I think these are some of the typical uh, uh, things or typical, typical things that the, the, the SME need, need to look into. Other than that, it's a typical pay pricing, speed of payment, uh, where they can send the payment to, how reliable is the service and so on. Great, uh, AB, this is very helpful. Now, I guess that this is also related to another question I'd like uh, to pick the brain of uh, Bill. Now, um, again, when, as I talk to our colleagues uh, at uh, different regulators, you know, the whole like anti-money laundering has become such a big deal that is really on top of the agenda for a lot of people, including SMEs. Now, but at the same time, SMEs do not really have the resources, right? I mean, the full-time lawyer, to advise them all these like changing regulations. So I guess, you know, past conversation, you said that technology, uh, particularly what you guys have been developing can actually help part of that. So can you elaborate a little bit about how your technology can help your customers to deal with the changing regulatory environment, the AML and everything, and fraud detection and so on. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, so um, this is a very good question, but actually, um, from the perspective of the SMEs, especially, uh, you know, most of them, they are all, you know, um, good ones, good clients, right? So, so they, from their perspective, they just don't need to take care of, to, to, to consider, the regulation changes they would just focus on you know doing their business but um so our job is to make sure we identify all those abnormal transactions to identify all those you know criminal and then we eliminated them from our our system and we so so by doing so we will be able to again make comfort to our clients they you just you know put 100 percent of your energy into doing your business operation. You don't have to worry about, you know, um, getting your bank account closed or something like that. So we'll be able to provide very stable service to you, just that you need to submit some of your documents to us. And then we have a, you know, risk engine to make sure all the transactions are well monitored. And for those, um, um, you know, normal clients, they just feel comfortable and they just need to, you know, become experts in everything, especially experts in financial services. So, so this is really what we bring, the, the value we bring to our, you know, um, normal clients. They just set your heart aside and just, you know, don't need to become an expert in finance. So kind of, you know, just become, you know, very, very, make sure, you know, our solutions are very simple to them and saves a lot of time and energy of them. Yeah, well, I guess that this is uh, really the purpose for the, this kind of webinars is that obviously I think a lot of firms like uh, I think the four leaders on the call, they've spent so much time building up the capabilities, particularly those sort of behind the scene, like uh, what uh, Bill just mentioned. Eventually, uh, when you look at the, the way that uh, we see the world is heading, you know, things got a bit more complex. So doing things manually is no longer an option. But thank God, I think that's companies like uh, like for companies here, they, they put in the energy. So like like build, they build this like enormous you know, compliance team. 
build technology. So they have basically do a lot of heavy lifting for you as SMEs, so they can focus on the, on the business. So this is a great message that, that we'd like to get across. Now, um, I guess uh, we have uh, some time that I'd like to uh, uh, answer uh, some questions from the audience. So we will just go from uh, the sequence that they come in. Uh, okay, so I think the question, first question is for uh, Eric. And the question is, uh, there's some credit cards that offer like a three months zero interest for consumers without merchant limitation. So how can you compare that homey service with the banks? So I'm sure that you got a lot of these questions from your merchant clients. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ken. And also thanks, Eric Lee's uh, question. Yeah, uh, the main difference uh, between uh, Atomi and other credit card players is how we position ourselves and differentiate uh, ourselves from each other. I think we have a very clear positioning and a targeting on younger generation uh, in terms of merchant selection, campaign design, and social strategy wise. And also product design, uh, we are, uh, right now we focused on three months uh, um, um, uh, uh, tunnel for the users and for uh, banks, I think they have a wider uh, um, product portfolio. And also uh, talking about the like the, the, the penalty for users, if there's any delay of payment, I think the mechanisms or the um, or the pricing will a lot be uh, will be a lot different because uh, uh, from Atomi, um, we insist on not charging our users for a fee. Uh, but for um, some of the uh, credit card company, even though there's like a free uh, installment plan, uh, most of the time they shall need to pay uh, like handling fee. So I think that's the main difference here. Uh, and then finally, I'd like to add a bit just now, as I've mentioned, that there's some like snowball uh, um, debt issue there. Because for uh, Atomi, if there's any delay of payment from user side, we will suspend their Atomi account, meaning they will not be able to use our Atomi service anymore until they pay a fee, a fixed fee. Our, our fee has been uh, listed on our website. It's like uh, 50 uh, HKD up to 300 HK dollars, no matter what you, how much you have paid. I mean, the fee is fixed. But for talking about the credit card side, if you have as a, a user, if you have like delay of payment, I think they're gonna have some snowball uh, uh, interest fee uh, for the users. So I think that's the main difference here. That's great. Uh, th thank you so much, Eric. Now, um, there's a question uh, to Bill, uh, which uh, I think Bill answer. But I'd like to ask on behalf of the, the audience too. So the question uh, was, uh, who is the majority of your current client base? So I, I guess what, what I'd like to ask is, uh, is the kind of conversation we had earlier. And that is, I think in China, there's like, well, a few millions SMEs, across different sectors. So from your uh, experience, because you, you, you mentioned that you're currently serving uh, over 150,000 uh, SMEs from China. So can you shed some lights? Uh, that's not confidential, right? Shed some lights about the kind of uh, industries or the kind of sectors that uh, these exporters are from. So uh, is it apparel, is it skincare? What, what kind of business are they, uh, are they in? Um, so they are really um, B2B focused exporters, which means their buyers are also the, uh, the, the, the company, as I mean, uh, importers from around the world. So what they sell is all kinds of things you can think of. We call it general goods. So they are mostly based on all the cities along the east coast of China, because China have a, you know, a full suite of the you know, supply chain. So they sell things like including the industry goods like uh, machine tools, uh, including the you know cons consumer goods uh, like, 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 like like electronic gadgets. Um, so so they almost sell everything you can see from from the daily lives and everything you can see from factories. So so we we are not uh, you know we do not um you know focus on you know pr providing services to only. Uh, 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 narrow, we do not have narrow down the, the, the you know the, 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 the verticals of the industry of, of our clients. So we, we we just to make sure that they are the, the exporters they are selling goods to their importers from around the world. Uh, and also maybe you know um maybe more things to share. So the the the, 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 the yearly um, exporting volume is between three hundred thousand to several millions. So so 
the, the, the smallest companies is that, you know, one single people with one laptop that, you know, they can support, support a exporting volume like as, as much as 1 million USD, USD dollar per year. So they are truly, um, we, we don't call it small and medium size. They're truly a very a micro, very, very micro firms. So that even if individuals could do, you know, export business in China. So that's, um, we call it a little bit um, unique um, for, from the, the, the Chinese market. Great. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Bill. Now, I'd like to uh, also uh, hear the thoughts from Nikki. There's a question uh, uh, that I'd like to uh, pose to you. And that is, uh, well, the, the question is from uh, Maya, Maya that there's a number of uh, local competitors uh, uh, that have been uh, here for a number of years. So the question is, so how do you stand out uh, amongst uh, the, the, the incumbents? Uh, you're on mute. Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, so the, and I think the question is also asking about um, our market positioning, which also sort of goes, I think, hand in hand with, with how we stand out. Um, so Card Up serves uh, multiple segments of the market. So um, I think unlike some of the um, other platforms in the market that are more focused on the small business, we actually have uh, customers, including mid-sized companies, corporates, and actually even multinational uh, companies that are using our platform today. And what that means in terms of, sort of differentiation is that some of the software tools and, and integrations within CardUp's platform is uh, different to, to some of these competitors. I, I mentioned earlier about partnerships uh, like with SAP Concur, for example, you know, that's a, I think a very nice um, solution for perhaps a, a more mid-size business, a mid-size SME. Um, and these are the types of integrations that I think uh, stand us apart and, and that are the, the unique to our platform currently. Um, I would also add that we also partner with 15 of the major banks um, across Hong Kong and Singapore. Um, which is, uh, I think, a lot, lot more than, than uh, some of the other fintech providers in this space. Um, and that means that we can actually do quite customized um, sort of pricing or, or partnership or even product solutions for our, for our users. Great. <laughs> now, um, I guess I'm also conscious of time. Uh, and uh, let me just quickly go to a question, uh, perhaps, uh, for AB, and then I'll, I may have one more for Eric before I, I would pick the brain from all four speakers. Now, um, so the question for AB is, uh, so can you share the KYC process? Now, actually, let, let me just uh, restate the, uh, the question, so therefore the other audience uh, uh, reference. Now, so I think the original question was that, uh, does people have to uh, sign up to the Tunes uh, uh, site uh, before receiving payments? And the answer, I believe, maybe is no. So, so, that, so that leads to the question of, if you don't require the users to sign up, then, then can you share a little bit about your KYC process uh, on the payees? Right, uh, we don't we do actually KYC, KYC the beneficiary of the payee, uh, but we, we do need to uh, KYC the sender. Uh, uh, we do need to uh, onboard the sender or the SME uh, to use our platform to process the payment. I think that is, that is one of the key uh, prerequisite, right? Whoever onboarded into the platform, we need to uh, KYB them, um, in this case, uh, to understand their business, to understand their business model, and then they can use the platform to process the payment to, to anywhere. So we don't KYC or we do not need to sign out the beneficiary or, or the payee, but we do screening, meaning we need we, for every single transaction that we process, we do a screening against the, the blacklist, all the different lists, our OFAT list, uh, FBI list and, and so on. So this is something that we do. And also we do transaction monitoring uh, to, to ensure that uh, there's no suspicious transaction that we are processing and we, in, in, in many cases, we do need to validate with an invoice, especially for business payment. We do want to ensure that we know what is the purpose of the, what, what is the underlying of these payments. I think that's about all. Great. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, let me ask uh, the question to Eric. Uh, there, there was a question to you, but I would like to ask it a slightly different way. The question was around how do you guys stand out, which you briefly talk about. But I'd like to ask in a different way that you also emphasize a bit about your KOL strategy that you have on board at uh, over 250 KOLs. So uh, can you just, you know, in, in a few sentences, can you share with the audience 
how does it work? How, that, that, does it work well? I would assume it is. So can you share a little bit about, how, I guess, how powerful, right? This so sort of KOL engine is to help your merchant clients to do more business. Uh, I think it's also uh, it's all about the, the the habits of the younger generation. Recently, I uh, I think everybody knows that this younger generation they don't uh, watch TV a lot. So um, if you still put your dollar into like TV commercial, I don't. I'm not saying it, it doesn't work, but I think uh, to uh, better cater to their habits or interest, I think we need a diversified promotion strategy. So, uh, so uh, uh, and we are observing their uh, changing habits. They are shifting from like traditional media over the years already to some new media. They like uh, be uh, they, they like being engaged with the the the, the uh, social influencers. They like to be recognized among their peers. So, uh, with this kind of a psychology uh, 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 effect. So I think we uh, grab their um, their interest, and we've been working with those of KOLs. First, we find who are the most popular ones, and we have a lot of engagement activities with those KOLs by um, like by throwing our like a bit a bit marketing dollars to um, have more engagement and also to. Uh, some of the KOLs we've been working with them for a quite long while to help them to grow their e-commerce business too. Because those KOLs, they start to change, not just uh, the KOL, but also KOL and also the e-shop owners. So we grow their business with them together. So I think that makes a difference. Uh, we are the partners from very start. Great. I think, I think this is a great way for us to, to wrap up. Uh, our session today. I think before we end, <clears throat> I would like to ask uh, each of our speakers uh, to uh, basically share like one quick thoughts to the SME the owners about how they can scale the business. So perhaps this time I invite uh, the lady first, uh, perhaps Nick, Nikki, can you uh, get your thoughts yeah. about your advice? On, on, on how to scale, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think in this uh, environment more than ever, cash flow is obviously incredibly important. So I think um, for any business owner, I think including probably all of us on the panel, um, it's really important right now to have tools or solutions that both um, keep things simple in order to save time so that you can focus on your core business whilst at the same time sort of optimizing cash flow. Um, so I think it's really about simple digital solutions that can simplify uh, your life and deliver those benefits. Great. So maybe uh, Eric, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, thanks. Our advice just to the... Yeah, thanks in just one sentence. Uh, to adapt quickly, be one step ahead of the bigger players so that you can seize more opportunity. Great. Yeah, this is always great advice. Now, uh, AB, uh, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I think... Um, I would like SME to see beyond just a typical country when they want to expand the business to, to like US, Europe. I think, they, I think they need to look into some emerging markets. There are a lot of potential in the emerging market that we shall not underestimate them. And I, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Great. Uh, so but not least, uh, Bill, any final thoughts? Yeah, maybe just one second. In terms of yeah. advice to SME. Yeah. So, so I would like to encourage SMEs to um, go, go digital in every aspect of the business operation. You know, so this is the, um, the digital era, so let's embrace it. Great. I think actually, well, we, have, we haven't really coordinated the answers. And this is really a good way for us to wrap up you know, the, uh, the session today. Again, the, we are just so fortunate that we got some four very knowledgeable leaders to share with us. And the objective for us is we really help the SMEs to really understand what's out there to help them do a better business. And also, I just want to also thank again uh, the three supporting organizations, the Chinese General Chamber of Commerce, Federation of Hong Kong Industries, and Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce. So without you guys, we cannot get access to, to so many SMEs to, uh, to join us today. So I guess uh, thank you so much. And I hope that uh, in the upcoming session, we can have more great uh, ideas to share with the SME community in Hong Kong. So thank you so much. And I hope that you enjoyed uh, this session today. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a nice day.